The Dragon Age Valgard controversy has got even more ridiculous. Dragon Age The Valgard has shaped up to become one of the most divisive video games released this year. Aside from the heavy injection of highly polarizing modern-day gender ideology into a medieval fantasy setting, the far more heinous accusation that has been made is that EA and BioWare have been manipulating review scores by selectively only dishing out codes to those who they believe will praise the game and showcase it in a positive light, because, of course, nothing says confidence in your product than corruption and needing to rig the reviews. While plenty of creators have boldly informed us that they were denied review codes, another juicy twist is unfolding. This is where it gets crazier. It turns out that, rather than present fair and honest criticism, a certain few of the detractors of Dragon Age have too been behaving in questionable ways, stooping to seemingly desperate levels intentionally spreading disinformation in a cringeworthy attempt to discredit the game, thus making themselves just as bad as the very product they're so eager to condemn. Bravo folks, nothing like hypocrisy to add a little flair to your credibility. So, with all of that out of the way, grab some popcorn and settle in as we dive into the latest thrilling instalment of the Dragon Age Dumpster Fire, where, amusingly enough, some of the game's loudest critics are managing to look just as shamelessly dishonest as the publishers themselves. Yes, it's a spectacle where integrity takes a backseat on both sides of the debates, making the two sides look just as foolish and manipulative as each other. I am Lady Decade, hit that subscribe button for regular spicy content. And this is why the Dragon Age The Valgard's drama has spiralled even more out of control. The discussion surrounding Dragon Age has been intense, raising numerous questions about the integrity of corporate game journalism and the developers themselves. As previously mentioned here, the scandal involving review codes seems to have significantly impacted the game's integrity. Moreover, the game's director, Kareen Bush, is a trans woman, and they have led the creation of a game with dialogue filled with modern identity politics and buzz phrasing. Bearing all of this in mind, it's clear why this game was quickly swept up in the culture wars, regardless of the game's quality and the obvious review code corruption. Even Forbes would write negatively about the game's politically charged dialogue, criticising certain scenes that unfold. They mention the bits that they believe will play directly into the narrative that this game is woke, feeding a cycle of online discourse that goes nowhere but earns lots of clicks. It will undoubtedly turn many gamers off entirely, not necessarily because they're unsympathetic to trans rights, but because they're tired of being preached at. In the scene in question, one character misgenders another. To atone for this sin, she does a set of push-ups and then lectures the other characters on how to properly apologise. Cringe, inducingly embarrassing stuff. Forbes also adds that the term non-binary is thrown around, despite this being a word that very few people have even heard of when Dragon Age Inquisition came out a decade ago, let alone in a fantasy setting divorced entirely from the real world. This is immersion breaking. Frankly, it's written so poorly that it comes across as self-parody. The character's performative apology is shallow and empty, as all performative apologies are. In my experience, a simple and genuine sorry is better than making a big show of it and then bragging about how much better your apology is. The whole scene feels freshly cut from some conversation in an undergrad gender studies class in the year 2024. The kind of conversation said undergrads will someday look back on and cringe over. Regarding this, they add, you can see how misguided the game's writers truly are in this scene. They're making it all about them. Also, they can be praised for their progressive bona fides rather than doing the hard work required to tell stories that might actually evoke in players true empathy and understanding. Tapping into that, creating something that people can relate to requires more than a cudgel. Nobody enjoys being beaten over the head. In the parlance of our times, do better, Bioware. Do better, Bioware. Do better, indeed. But 
to be fair to them, they're not the only people currently that Dragon Age is making look foolish. The Valguard might not be a game that floats your boat, but fortunately for you, I can get you huge discounts on many modern video games with some of the highest user review scores around. This includes the amazing metaphor Space Marines 2, Black Myth Wukong, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, and many more. Please don't take my word, these games are great. The user review scores will do that for you. In fact, I can get you up to 90% off of thousands of modern AAA, indie, and retro games or by using my affiliate links via my pinned comment. Grab some out of this world bargains and support an independent voice like mine simultaneously. Happy shopping! This brings us to the latest Dragon Age drama, one that, fittingly enough, involves an apology. So let's begin digging into this. On the 29th of October, GamesRadar.com reported that just before the review embargo lifted on Dragon Age the Valgard, the Twitterverse buzzed with explosive posts from a user who claimed their friend had snagged a review copy. Teasing their friend's letdown, the tweets showcased in-game snapshots of a custom main character, Rook, decked out in bold facial tattoos. Overall, the game has been no stranger to the perilous waters of pre-launch social media leaks, but the plot thickened dramatically in this instant. YouTube influencer Matty Schroeder, famously known as Mr. Matty Plays, dropped his much-anticipated review of the game. A 40-minute in-depth critique of the game that I praised on this channel in the previous episode for the level of honesty it seemed to feature in comparison to much of the corporate drivel I had read. While Schroeder voiced his disappointment with the game, the real shocker came when fans noticed that the rook in his video was a dead ringer for the one from those earlier movies mysterious leaks. Unsurprisingly, this controversy ignited debates across gaming forums and social media, stirring up a storm as fans and critics alike clamoured to connect the dots. The jig was up, intentional or not. And the footage was clearly from him, so the embargo had been broken. This would result in an extremely groveling and long-winded apology in the form of a twit longer, which I will paraphrase to some degree, bearing in mind that it's over 800 words long, but it reads, I think it goes without saying, but today has been an extremely hard day. I really appreciate your patience as I looked into things. First off, I would like to apologise to everyone at Bioware and EA. I have already reached out to them to let them know the truth. We already have plans to sit down and have a conversation about it. That is my gameplay. It was never my intention for clips of Dragon Age to get released ahead of the embargo lifting. I had shared these two clips of the game with an editor of mine. It is to my understanding that these clips were then taken, shared again, and went down the chain to someone far removed from both of us, who then posted them claiming to be associated with me. So yes, the clips are mine. If Bioware, EA or any other game company chooses not to work with me over this, then I fully understand and accept that. If you, the viewers of my content, choose not to trust me because you deem me irresponsible with the privilege I was given as a game reviewer, I also fully understand and accept that. But it's the next part of the twit longer where things begin to get a bit spicier. With that said, it's extremely important for me to firmly shut down one element of this narrative going around about me. Whoever shared these clips on X with the attached hateful comments and replies is not me. I have no clue who runs that account. They are most definitely not my friend, and they stand against everything I believe in. I am only speculating, but I think whoever took my game footage and tweeted it as if they were connected with me was quite deliberate, as it's an easy way to paint me in a bad light. Beyond any guesses I may have, I would never leak my own footage on an alt account and then use that exact same footage in my review. Said account no longer exists, and it is my understanding that it is because it was reported multiple times following the public ridicule it rightfully received. There's no room for that type of hate. I know I can't convince each and every one of you, but I do think you will deserve an explanation. At the end of the day, my circle of trust was breached, and it was my fault for sending a clip in the first place. I'm deeply disheartened by the amount of people who believed that this Twitter account was me. I don't expect a blind loyalty, yet it hurts to see just how quickly I was thrown under the bus. 
the sad reality of it all is the damage is done and many people have made up their minds about me today. Since I have started covering this game, many angry opinions have fallen in my lap. When I played the preview, I thoroughly enjoyed it and had a chance to interview the game's director, Kareem Bush. On that video, people were sending hate my way because they wanted their opinions heard. Now I have put out my honest and objective review and people are still unhappy with my personal opinion. It has always been my goal to deliver fair, honest coverage of video games and elevate the conversation, not fan the flames. I'm deeply sad that my clips have played into the detraction of a game that, as stated in my review, others may enjoy more than me. The statements made about my character today have broken my heart into a million pieces. I don't say that so you will feel bad for me, I just feel it's important to give my love to those who willingly stood by me in the face of all of this. I know it wasn't easy having your ethics in question just by being in my vicinity. Thanks for taking the time to read this and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Stay sexy, stay active, Matty. Wow. That was one big BP oil spill style apology. While I do feel some empathy towards Matt in this unfortunate situation, let's be clear. This apology is drowning in a melodrama. It's over the top to the point of undermining its purpose. Apologising is one thing, but this level of self-flagellation, especially towards a massive faceless corporation like Bioware or EA, comes across as unnecessarily submissive. Personally, I think that in situations like these, less is more. A concise acknowledgement of the mistake, a straightforward plan to prevent it from happening again, and a brief reassurance to fans would be far more effective. Apologies to big corporations, especially when they're written with such excessive emotion that they feel oddly misplaced. Well, Matty has presented himself as a figure of pity rather than a confident, capable individual. We have seen situations like this enough times online to know that over-apologising doesn't sit well with most fans. It shifts the focus from addressing the issue to begging for approval. In my opinion, this isn't the kind of image you want to project as a creator. It makes your content and ultimately you seem shaky and unsure of yourself. But that's just my opinion. I personally do not like the idea of groveling to the public or billion dollar corporations, but I guess at least he didn't sing his apology with a ukulele. While this situation is undoubtedly a bit cringeworthy, it's another part of this story where things got worse. As all of this drama was unfolding, CEO, designer and former team lead for OG World of Warcraft, Mark Kern, using his well-known ex-account Grums, would post some damning information. The prominent voice in the anti-woke movement would tweet out, Leak. Bioware and EA caught red-handed. Mr. Matty Play's agreement supposedly leaked. It wasn't a conspiracy theory, it was true. Return to form a required phrase. Content creation guidelines for Dragon Age Veilguard leaked. If true, this confirms everything. There is so much more here. You cannot talk about woke. This is access journalism. This is bullcrap and we have to tear the corrupt system all down. Beneath the statement, an apparent non-disclosure agreement for Dragon Age of the Valgard addressed to Matt would be attached. It essentially outlines that the phrase, return to form, has to be used in all reviews and that the identity politics in the game cannot be criticised under any circumstances. An interesting turn of events. If all of it wasn't just one big fat lie, Colin Moriarty, who is listed as one of the recipients of this alleged NDA, would come out and say this is completely fake. Ultimately, X's community notes feature confirms this all to be fake news. Matty too would swiftly clap back at the accusation that his NDA had been leaked, commenting that Misinformation like this is damaging to the gaming community. This post is unbelievably false and is not the NDA I signed with EA. Not even remotely close. The creator of this post even stated they are inclined to believe it is untrue. This is the last time I will be speaking about this moving forward. 
While Matty understandably seems annoyed by this, I have to say from his tweets that he is just plain factually wrong. The fake NDA is not misinformation, it is blatant dis information and there is a huge difference. I very rarely moan about semantics but I do feel this needs to be clarified. Misinformation is a false or inaccurate information that is shared without the intention to deceive. This can happen when people unknowingly pass along incorrect facts, rumours or misunderstandings believing them to be true. Something that Grums is 100% guilty of in this circumstance. This information, on the other hand, is deliberately false information spread with the intent to deceive or manipulate people. This dishonesty is often used to influence public opinion, mislead audiences or cause confusion, with the original creator of the fake NDA document itself certainly being guilty of this misdeed. The NDA has clearly been designed to attempt to damage the reputation of either Matty or Dragon Age itself. It's a downright nasty, unnecessary and repugnant thing to do. And due to its salacious nature, Grums tweeting out this disinformation has so far reached 1.6 million people and counting. That's potentially a lot of people now with a false impression of things. Whether Grums tweeted this disinformation purposefully or not, it certainly does demonstrate one thing. There are clearly bad actors on both sides of the Dragon Age drama coin, as shown by the deceitful fake NDA agreement. Grums has, unsurprisingly, attracted criticism, especially from progressive voices on the left. Known for his online activism, including his past support for the Gamergate movement, his recent outspoken opposition to diversity and inclusion initiatives and in video games, heightened by the recent Stellar Blade controversy, has intensified this divide. This has continuously amplified his already polarizing reputation. In fact, since the fake NDA tweet was sent out, it's not just those on the left who have been criticizing his often excessive actions. His recent act received harsh criticism, even on Side Scrollers, a show that often features Grums as a guest, along with lots of other right-leaning personalities in gaming. Oh no, it's Alex would scathingly comment regarding Grums that... I think he's been a net negative. Okay, I think what happens is that anytime he's attached to, to something, there's so much baggage with him that it comes around and it literally brings down any sort of even semi-positive movement that is happening towards games. You can make the argument like, oh, we want games to be better. We don't really want to be force-fed bad writing, bad games. This is really just like you're trying to satiate a market that isn't there. It is this thing where what happens is he makes so many mistakes continuously throughout trying to consolidate data and whatnot that it just does not help any sort of movement that he's attached to, and it makes everyone look like clowns. Although he's categorically putting things together, the problem is that it becomes like, how far in the fringe are you willing to let someone like this impact a scene in gaming, a hobby that many people definitely enjoy because they have something they want to push. Honestly, I'm going to be real about this. It's two sides of the same coin. He just got retards on both sides fighting for control. Like, how about stop and just make the good video game? Based! And an absolutely hilarious description of the culture wars. Personally, I think Alex's analysis is spot on. The two sides of the same coin is due to the horseshoe theory. The horseshoe theory in political science suggests that extreme ideologies on both the left and right converge in behaviours or outcomes despite their differing ideals. Both extremes often exhibit deep anti-establishment sentiments, propose utopian visions justifying radical actions, and employ similar tactics to push their messaging. Both sides have simplistic black and white world views, leading to the demonization of opponents and an uncompromising stance. Moreover, these groups are typically reactionary, defining themselves more by what they oppose rather than by foundational ideologies. 
The video game industry, particularly in Western countries, is largely based in urban areas that are culturally more progressive. The creators, developers and other industry professionals often reflect the social norms and values of these environments which tend to lean left politically and socially. Corporate social responsibility also plays a role as companies are increasingly expected to support social justice issues, using games as platforms for advocacy on topics like diversity and inclusion. These factors combine to make progressive messaging more common in the industry as it aligns with both the cultural leanings of the creators and the strategic business decisions of the industry. So I think it is very important that we regularly critique this imbalance, but I don't think we should try to replace one set of extremes with another. Partisan politics suck, including in gaming. Regarding the recent tweet of infamy, which has the potential for a lot of unnecessary reputational damage, apart from tweeted out fake news, I think the other issue is how Grums chose to frame the post. Labelling information as a leak implies a level of exclusivity and truth to the information that may not exist if it's unverified, which we know in retrospect it was unverified. This misled his audience into taking the information more seriously than they should. He also used this salacious line, it wasn't a conspiracy theory, it was true. Asserting that something was true prior to verification undermines a writer's integrity and can lead to spreading misinformation or, in this case, actually purposefully producing disinformation. It is crucial to check facts before making definitive statements like this. By the way, simply stating later in the text, if true, this confirms everything, contradicts the earlier absolute assertions. It's a nonsense way of writing eroding trust in his credibility. Ethically, I think it's irresponsible to assert something as fact that has not been confirmed. It can cause unnecessary panic or mislead public opinion, affecting perceptions and decisions based on false premises. I believe that online personalities with captive audiences have a duty of care to perform a due diligence in their reporting and clearly in this particular instance none was done. I feel this is even more important for an internet user like Grums, who is spearheading a political movement in gaming. Many members of his audience take what he says as gospel because he can be considered a person of authority having worked in the very industry he's critiquing. Further to this, everything he writes for public consumption will always be scrutinised under a microscope, more so than the average Twitter user. Sloppy mistakes like this provide great ammunition for his detractors and political enemies, which is certainly far from ideal for someone who puts himself in the metaphorical firing line. If you're someone who regularly makes such strong, bold statements, you want to f***ing make sure your statements are watertight and factually correct, as it doesn't just hurt his credibility, but everyone who echoes everything he says. Speaking of which, while already on the topic of due diligence, this raises a parallel issue I would also like to mention. On this channel, I do my absolute utmost to provide you with the most accurate information possible, usually with the sources for where I got all of the information for a topic listed in my descriptions below. However, some weeks on the internet are not as salacious as others, and I often find that no particularly interesting news has emerged for me to discuss. So. I normally resort in those instances to just covering a topic that's not trending. I'm, I'm just putting it out there that in these dry news weeks, there are a lot of creators out there who magically have some fantastically timed rumours to report on rather than verified news and will often spout information given to them by so-called anonymous sources rather than supply us with anything sufficient and concrete. Sure, I understand that linking rumours and information from anonymous sources will certainly generate the most clicks, as you can link these stories to whatever is trending, but don't you think it's all a bit convenient that these anonymous sources always come forward when there's no actual news to talk about? It's food for thought, isn't it? I, personally, don't trust any information without a verified source. 
As for Grums, to give the man his due, he would acknowledge that his post about Matty wasn't actually true, commenting about the NDA. I posted this as a rumoured link and it turns out it was false. Sometimes rumours don't pan out to be true. I'm leaving this up because it is already community noted and I'm not trying to hide a mistake. Thanks to my followers who helped track this down. You guys deserve better vetted information and I'll be doing that much more in the future. Regardless of this response, this is why these days I attempt to comment on rumours as little as possible. Without accurate information, commenting on rumours can easily come back to bite you. Engaging with unsubstantiated claims can lead to the spread of misinformation or worse, disinformation. This unnecessarily harms reputations and undermines credibility so, in my opinion, it should be avoided when possible. Discussions and comments must be based on verified facts to maintain trust and integrity in communication. This approach helps prevent potential misunderstandings and avoids the negative consequences that arise from perpetuating or giving credence to baseless rumours. Spreading fake rumours about a game like Dragon Age, which was already being criticised for its portrayal of gender ideology and alleged gatekeeping of reviewers, significantly detracts from the constructive criticism the game has been receiving and meaningful discourse around what has transpired. This is a massive shame, considering the misdeeds that took place throughout Dragon Age's review process. Don't forget I can get you huge discounts on many modern video games with some of the highest review scores around. This includes The Amazing Metaphor, Space Marines 2, Black Myth, Wukong, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero and many more. Don't take my words for it, these games are great. The user review scores will do that for you. In fact, I can get you up to 90% off for thousands of modern AAA indie and retro games all by using my affiliate links via my pinned comments. Grab some out of this world bargains and support an independent voice like mine simultaneously. Or if you want to support what I do in a more personal way, then access my behind the scenes cosplay library and more by becoming a backer over on Patreon. I look forward to speaking to all of you over there one-on-one -on -one soon.